So in this session, we're going to do a quick refresher on curve sketching, uh, and we're going to run through the example of this function up here, x squared plus 5x plus 4, all divided by x minus 2. So what we're going to do is build a list, a kind of treasure chest of key pieces of information, little golden nuggets about this function that will eventually allow us to sketch the whole thing at the end. So the first thing we're going to look into are the x-intercepts x-intercepts. Where does the x-intercept happen? Well, that's when our y-value, our f of x-value, equals 0. So we set our function to 0. 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 4, all divided by x minus 2. OK, when is this true? Well, what we can say is that actually, if our top line equals 0, then the whole thing must equal 0, unless the bottom line equals 0 at the same time. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's look at our top line on its own. x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. We could plug that into our quadratic equation, 1, 5, and 4. Or we could spot that this thing actually factorizes. So we get x plus 4 and x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, our values of x, where our function equals 0, are x equals minus 4 and x equals minus 1. OK, so we've now found our x-intercepts, and we can put them into our treasure chest. OK, minus 4, comma, 0, and minus 1, comma, 0. Right, that's the first pieces of information. On to the next one. What about our y-intercepts? OK, when does our function have a value that crosses the y-axis, well, that's going to be at x equals 0. So y-intercepts are going to be, here we go, f of x equals 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 4 divided by 0 minus 2. OK, forget all the zeros. Of course, they just disappear. And now we've got 4 divided by minus 2 leaving us with just minus 2. So we've now got our y-intercepts at 0, comma, minus 2. OK, so very quickly, in the space of one minute, we've already found out three very important things about our function. The next thing we're going to look at are asymptotes. OK, are there any asymptotes, any vertical asymptotes, slant asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes? Well, we can straight away see, because this is in a nice polynomial fractional form, we can say, well, anywhere where the denominator, the bottom line, equals 0, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So let's take our denominator and say, OK, x minus 2 equals 0. Very easy. x equals 2. So at x equals 2, we know we've got an asymptote. But what kind of asymptote? Well, there are four different ways this could look. Right, here's 2, here's 2 his 2 and his 2. OK, so we know we've got a vertical asymptote, but is it going to be one like this, like this, like this, or like this? Four different options, diagonally across, both negative or both positive. Well, what we do is we take the function very close to 2, but just either side, and we see whether the value is positive or negative. OK, so if we take the function and we say, what happens at x equals 2 and a little bit? OK, so we can do this formally by saying 2 plus delta, but we often don't need to. We can do it by inspection. So the top line, 2 and a bit squared is a positive number. 5 at, uh, times 2 and a bit is a positive number. 4 is a positive number. So we've got positive on the top line. And the negative, 2 and a bit minus 2, we're well just going to have that bit left. So that's a positive number as well. So that's positive. So we know that when x is bigger than 2, it's positive. So that has got rid of these two. But which one of these is it? So we just say, well, what happens when x is slightly less than 2? So 2 minus a bit squared, it's going to be positive. 5, 2 minus, it's going to be positive, positive again. So the top line is positive again. But the bottom line, slightly less than 2 minus 2, that's going to be a negative number. So positive divided by negative is negative. So it's going to be negative. So we're looking for this one. 
So we know now that at x equals 2, there's an at vertical asymptote, and it's of this form here. So we can put that in our treasure chest. V asym. OK, and we can say x equals 2, and we can say it looks like this. Oh, let's do some dots. OK, and it looks like one of this variety. OK, we don't know yet how far those asymptotes are going to go, whether these curves are going to turn back at each other. We just know that there's a vertical line at 2 where this thing is asymptotic. OK, so the next piece of information we're going to look for are, are there any slant asymptotes? Are there any slant asymptotes in our system? Well, this occurs if you have a polynomial ratio expression where the top line is a one higher order than the bottom line. Is that the case? We've got x squared on top, but only x on the bottom. So yes, we'd expect to find a slant asymptote. How do we go about finding the equation of that line? Well, what we do is algebraic long division. So I had to even refresh my own memory about how to do this just to make this video. So it's not something that I've actually used very often, but it's, it's a good trick. So let's have a go. Right, we've got x squared plus 5x plus 4, all divided by x minus 2. I suspect a lot of you at school could have done this, but may well have forgotten like I did. So the method is, in each line, we're trying to get rid of a bit of this function that we're dividing. So we say, OK, if I want to make an x squared, how do I make it with this? What do I multiply it by? Well, I multiply it by x. If I multiply it by x, I get x squared minus 2x. I then subtract that from the function. Next line. So x squared minus x squared is gone. 5 minus minus 2 is plus 7x. 4 minus nothing is plus 4. Now we do it again. If I want to make 7x, but I've just got x minus 2, I have to multiply it by 7. So I now get 7x minus 14, and I subtract that away. And what am I left with? Well, that goes away, and I get 4 minus minus 14. That is plus 18. So we can now write our function in an entirely different way. That's exactly the same, but it's just a different way of writing it. So we can say f of x is equal to x plus 7, and this remainder term here, plus 18 over the original denominator, x minus 2. So these two ways of writing the function are totally equivalent. And this, as we shall see, is going to turn out to be quite useful later on. So we've got this slant asymptote, and what that analysis has told us is that the slant has the function x plus 7. So if we say s asy, OK, and we can say, right, it's got the function y equals x plus 7, which means it's going to look a little bit like, well, let's just put on x plus 7. It's going to look a little bit like this, with 7 and minus 7 there. OK, the next thing we're going to start to look for are the stationary points. OK, and you'll remember that we find those by first differentiating our function. Now, we can take a function like this, and if we want to differentiate it, we could use the uh, quotient rule, which is a kind of formula for allowing you to differentiate ratios. But I don't remember the quotient rule, nor do I expect you to. We could equally rewrite this in the form x squared plus 5x plus 4 and x minus 2 to the power of minus 1. Again, another identical form. And we could use the product rule. But that looks like a lot of work. We just went to all the effort of doing long division in order to find this version of the function up here. This is a lot easier to differentiate. So let's save ourselves some time. So just as a reminder, if we wanted to do the product rule because we were being masochistic, we could say, well, this is u and this is v and f dash equals u dash v plus v dash u. OK, a lot of work. Or just by inspection, I can now say, well, f dash of x is going to equal x differentiates to 1. 7 differentiates to nothing, goes away. 
And then this thing, 18 over x minus 2, well, the differential of this thing on the bottom, it's got a negative exponent. So it's just going to be minus 18 times x minus 2 to the power of minus 2. OK, if you can't remember how to do that, you need to go away and look it up. Right, when do we find a turning point, or when do we find a stationary point? This occurs when our first derivative is equal to 0. OK, so we're going to do some rearrangement. I'm going to take this thing and put it over here. And then I'm going to divide through by 18. So two steps in 1. 1 over 1 plus 18 equals x minus 2 to the power of minus 2. Now remember, this thing here is just 1 over x minus 2 squared. So what I'm going to do is just flip over both sides of the equation. 18 equals x minus 2 squared. OK, I hope you're comfortable with that step. Next, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of this thing is, of course, just x minus 2. But the square root of 18 is plus or minus root 18. Don't forget that. Obviously, minus, 18 times minus root 18 times minus root 18 is plus 18. OK, so now, what values of x? So we get x equals, we take the 2 over, 2 plus or minus the square root of 18. Square root of 18, so square root of 9 times 2, square root of 9 is 3. So we can rewrite this as 2 plus or minus uh, 3 times the square root of 2. OK, so we've now found the x values of two stationary points. So we can go over here and put those in our treasure chest. So these are stationary points, OK? And they look like this, so we can say... Uh, 2 plus 3 root 2 and 2 minus 3, oops, 3 root 2. But we would also like to know, of course, the y values. Where are these turning points in the graph on the 2D Cartesian plane? So what we're going to have to do is simply sub those values back into our original formula. So we take 2 plus 3 root 2 and, two minus, and sub it back in here. Now. I could work through that, but let's just save some time, and I'll sub it in in advance. Here's one I made earlier. So we get, if we sub in 2 plus 3 root 2 into this, we get 9 plus 6 root 2. And if we sub in 2 minus 3 root 2, we get 9 minus 6 root 2. OK? So now we've got two points in space. We're about to do some curve sketching. So it'd be very useful for us to have an approximation of what these numbers are are actually going to be, well, this is going to be 2 plus 3 times 1.4, so it's going to be uh, about 6.2. This is going to be 2 minus, so that's going to be minus 2.2. This thing, 9, kind of do that in my head, it's going to be 17.5-ish. And this thing, 9 minus 6 root 2, so it's going to be the other way around, so it's going to be about 0 0.5. So we've now got the positions of our two stationary points, as well as rough approximations for when we want to sketch the graph. OK, the next thing we need to know is, these are stationary points, but are they uh, maxima, or are they minima, or are they even uh, inflections? So what we have to do is differentiate the function again. So I rubbed it out, but let's put it back up. So the first derivative of this thing, f dash of x, equals 1 minus 18 x minus 2 to the minus 2. We want to differentiate that thing again. Easy enough. The second derivative equals the 1 goes away. We, different, we move this down so we get plus 36, 2 times 18, x minus 2 to the power of minus 3. Now we want to know what is the value of this second derivative at these turning points. So we don't need to know the exact value, but we'd like to know whether it's positive or negative. So if we sub in 6.2, well, 6.2 minus 2 is just going to be 4-ish, a positive number. OK, a positive number to any exponent is still going to be a positive number. So this thing is going to be positive, which means it's going to be a minima. OK. Similarly, minus 2.2, so minus 2.2, minus 2 is minus 4, OK? And we've got an odd exponent, which means it will keep its sign, 
Okay, so we're going to have a negative number, which means this one is going to be a local maximum. So we now know we've got this long list of things which we've found out, and we can now begin to sketch our function. Right. So it's useful to, uh, you know, to practice this thing. You get a better intuition about what you're going to need to do next. But ultimately, let's just draw some axis, chuck on the points, and see what happens. So we'll draw some nice, big axes. OK, and start with our intercepts. Let's label everything on. So here we go. Minus 4, 0, and minus 1, 0. So minus 1, minus 4. OK. We've got a y-intercept at minus 2. So let's do minus 2 here. OK. And we've got a vertical asymptote at the value of x equals 2. So x equals 2 is going to be here. And it's going to look like this. OK, we've got a slant asymptote at, at the function y equals x plus 7. So x plus 7 will, uh, x equals 0, y equals 7. So that's going to be, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere here. And uh, y equals 0, x equals minus 7. So that's somewhere out here. OK, so it's going to look something like, like this. OK, now, we'd already discovered that our vertical asymptote has lines that look a bit like this. So let's get our curve sketching green pen and say, OK, to the left of 2, this thing comes up from below. And to the right of 2, this thing comes down from above. So it's going to look something like this. OK, we know it goes on to not cross this line. We know it goes through all those points. So we must be getting pretty close. OK, and the last thing we need to mark on are these stationary points, or what you're actually turning points. So 6.2, uh, so we've got 2 here. So 6.2 is going to be out here. And 17.5, so somewhere up here. And minus 2.2, minus 2, somewhere between these two, and plus 0.5, so somewhere about here. OK, so now that is all the information that we're going to need. We'll mark this on. This is going to be a maxima. This is going to be a minima, so we'll rub that out a little bit. OK, and we just grab our green line and go for it. OK, here we go, coming up through here and down and tending towards this red dotted line. And again, up from above, come down through the point and tending towards the green line, the red dotted line up there. So we've taken quite a complicated function that you probably couldn't have pictured in your head. Just run through a few simple procedures where we've gained little key pieces of information and finished up knowing everything there is to know about this function. OK, see you next time.